Today I want to explore an idea that I've started to notice uh, take hold online and that's the fact that beginners shouldn't buy dedicated cameras because the camera that you have in your pocket is already good enough. And start maybe a conversation about um, who needs to buy a dedicated camera right now. Uh, for this, I decided to go and compare some ca some phone cameras against my T3i or 600D if you're in Europe. It's an older camera that nowadays you can get picked up really cheap online and uh, something I would definitely steer a beginner or somebody that doesn't have too much money to spend on a camera. Uh, the amount of control that you get is the same with any DSLR, even though it's entry level, it's a pretty, it's a pretty powerful camera. This is my Canon T3i that I have permanently borrowed from my mom. It's helped me make a lot of videos on this channel. And this is my iPhone 12 Pro, and it's also helped me make some content on here. For an extra added bonus for this video, I also added this Samsung A21s, which is the cheapest phone that I could get at the local phone carrier store. And just a disclaimer, I'm not going to get super in-depth with the things that I'm looking at with these cameras since I don't really quite have the resources nor the know-how. I simply just want to express some details about these cameras that your average person might not realize. So first up, I decided to shoot some close-ups. Up first, we'll compare the two phones. Predictably, the iPhone 1, being sharper with more impressive shallow depth of field and just overall better image quality which goes to show that the processing in the phones is nothing to be messed with. But coming to the T3i, we get our first look at what DSLRs can do. While the image from the iPhone was usable, the DSLR's colors and ability to get a truly pleasing blurry background makes the image far more interesting. Moving on now with some landscapes, shot again with the two phones, iPhone wins out with better clarity and overall just better performance. Again, I can harp forever about the better processing in the iPhone. Even though Samsung does have its 48 megapixels with all of its special processing, it still cannot beat over the iPhone. Our DSLR here again wins out though overall, keeping clarity in the trees and then just overall having a more natural image as both of the phone photos seem to be quite processed. However, good images are possible to find on all three cameras. These photos of the water all look quite great. I think that I might even prefer the Samsung in this case as it was able to penetrate the water showing the pebbles underneath. The DSLR again was able to benefit from the more control it offers, giving a more stylized photo, but in this case, I think all performed quite well. Now on to the video. Video from the iPhone is quite pleasing, but the Samsung leaves a bit to be desired. Though, considering the price gap between the two, I feel that the Samsung actually performs quite well. And with a little bit of adjusting with the image, we can get the Samsung relatively clean looking. Now we're on the iPhone too. We're gonna switch over. Uh, this is vlogging on the cheaper DSLR. It's pretty rough. Um, all the controls here are pretty manual. Like for example, my focus, if I wanna focus on something else then I have to hold this button and it's a pretty annoying sound there, but um, it doesn't have tracking focus, but all in all, <laughs> differs significantly from the phones. It's a completely different feel with the uh, with the DSLR, for sure. Uh, there we go, I just fixed a little bit of the, the exposure. Like I said, it's, it's a real pain in the ass to try to change everything there, so that's the big thing about the phones, is it's just really just a point and shoot. Uh, but you do get uh, you know a lot more control with the DSLR and the switchable lenses, which is you know a big plus versus whatever they're gonna stick on the back of the phone for you to use. It's a big difference. Um, but with the iPhone, it's far nicer. Uh, it's stabilized, uh, and, and while it's got a bit of a, of a different look to it, it doesn't quite have the same DSLR feel. Far more convenient. If I do need like an extra shot, if I'm editing and I realize I've, I've missed out on something, then uh, I'll always grab my iPhone and then just grab it quickly because it's good enough. And a lot of popular channels nowadays are just using their iPhones. And even this rear camera, which is 
uh, not as good as, as the front is, is perfectly fine enough. So that was a quick look at what you could expect from either using your phone or a DSLR. The biggest takeaway I think someone should get from this video is how much control you get from using either the phone or the dedicated camera. If your goal is just to get the photo or the shot, then the phone's going to be just fine for you. And for most people, it's working just fine. I see DSLRs as a tool nowadays. It's something that allows you to learn about the process and get more creative with the things that you're making. So essentially, the average person does not need a dedicated camera or an old DSLR. I think that's a conclusion that not many people would be surprised at. Anyone that wants to get into photography or any sort of content creation, I can strongly advise toward a dedicated camera. Like investing into this old thing. Thank you so much for watching. I'm still quite new to making this sort of content, so all the support that I've been getting recently has been really great. And if you could leave a comment or hit the subscribe button or even just leave some feedback in the comments, it would be truly appreciated. Thanks for watching and goodbye.